Reconnect and heal today. Welcome to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Welcome to Love Never Dies Radio. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf, and I am so excited to be with you today. It's been a while since I've been with you, hasn't it? And I'm back exclusively on Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, and I'm coming to you live every first and third Thursday of every month at 1 p.m. Eastern, then the show rebroadcasts at 1 a.m., Eastern on Thursday and every Wednesday at 1 a.m. and 1 p.m. and every off week that is the second and fourth or fifth Thursday of every week uh, at 1 a.m. and 1 p.m. I know it's so confusing but just stick with me at uh, my social media handles and I will just remind you when the live show is and the cool thing is during the live show you're going to be able to call in and speak to me live like we always did on Hay House Radio. Now, you know Love Never Dies is my memoir and self-help book that shares the amazing true story of my spiritual reconnection with my beloved deceased husband, internationally renowned former Jesuit priest, Emile Jean Pain. Jean's astonishing after-death manifestations proved to me that our relationships aren't meant to end with bodily death because we don't die. (laughs) And so I created my groundbreaking new trans-dimensional grief therapy method that brings my acclaimed conflict resolution methods to the world of after-death communication. And the result is an unprecedented new method that offers you the first vehicle for not only reconnecting, but also making peace with the deceased. So I always remind you that Jean's over-the-top manifestations aren't just meant for me. They're meant for you, too. Because Jean told me right after he left his body, Jamie, let our love shine like a torch that lights the path for others. So this means Jean's manifestations are for you as well. They're meant to let you know that your loved ones are here with you, too. They're just waiting for you to learn how to open the door of your heart Learn how to tune to the spirit channel of your brain so that you can send and receive energetic communications to and from the spirit realm. I haven't been with you since my trip to France where I spent a week with my certified transdimensional grief resolution method coaches. And so I want to share with you some of the things that happened. I always share these manifestations. That's how we start the show. So... When I sat on the outdoor patio of the beautiful rented house that I found, it was perched on a cliff overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. I was looking at that beautiful turquoise water and suddenly Espy, one of my coaches said, you know, we're going to get a lot of manifestations. And suddenly butterflies began flitting all around us. It was just magic. And then I immediately said, You know, I planned an itinerary where we're going to hop from village to village. And as soon as I said that, a grasshopper hopped next to my hand. And he sat right next to me without moving. And I said, look at this. This is a manifestation from Jean. Grasshoppers don't sit still. They hop. And Jean is saying he's going to be hopping with us from village to village. And as soon as I acknowledged that Jean was manifesting his presence to me through the grasshopper, I said, he'll hop away, which is what happens when you acknowledge the meaning of a manifestation, it stops. And as soon as I said this, the grasshopper hopped away. And check it out, we videotaped this manifestation and you can see it on all of my social media pages. Uh, Facebook, you can see it on Ask Dr. Love or Dr. Jamie Turndorf or Love Never Dies book, it's there. You can also see it on Twitter, at Ask Dr. Love, and at Love NVR Dies book, it's everywhere. And I even put it on my Instagram, Dr. Jamie Turndorf, so check it out. A video is worth a thousand words. (laughs) Now one night, we had dinner at Le Vague d'Or, and this is in 
La Seine sur Mer. It's a beautiful old world style restaurant with tables on an outdoor promenade overlooking the sea. And just beyond the rail, the tables are all nestled along the rail, just beyond the rail is this gorgeous sandy beach with crashing waves, which is so unusual for the Mediterranean. And when we arrived, a magical fog shrouded the beach just as a full moon was rising over this bay. And at the end of our really beautiful meal, I noticed that there was a spotlight. Well, actually, it was a series of spotlights mounted at the edge of the restaurant's porch roof. And one of the spotlights, the one closest to us, started flickering on and off. And Jacqueline, another one of my dear coaches, said, oh, it must be a motion detector. And I thought, well, she must be right. Now notice, as many manifestations as I receive, I still am prone to the human skepticism of my rational mind buying into, oh yes, it must be a motion detector. And even my, co my coach Jacqueline thought the same thing. So everyone left the table, but Espy and I stayed behind and that light continued to go on and off. And I said, but Espy, look, there is no motion to explain why the light is going on and off. I said, it's not a motion detector light. Nobody's walked near it and it's still going on and off. And Espy and I just kept speaking and then she said, Jean is doing this to show you that you're so loved. That's why all of us came to France so that we could be with you because we love you. And then at that moment, Jean did the most amazing thing. He stopped turning that one spotlight on and off and he moved to a light that was mounted on the facade of the restaurant all the way to the other side of the covered porch on the building. And he switched the light so that he could manifest his presence showing that he knew what Jacqueline had said. He knew that she had said that the other light was a motion detector. So he was saying, all right, well, fine. I'll switch to this light mounted on the building. You're not going to call that a motion detector. And we captured that on film too. I haven't yet had a chance to post it for you. Now the next day, we drove to Saint Maxima to visit Mary Magdalene's Basilica. And this is the site where Mary Magdalene is buried. And as we walked to the church, remember, I'll never forget it. I turned left and I nearly bumped into a priest wearing a cassock. And I thought of Jean because he always wore a cassock when he was a Jesuit priest. And I said hello to him. And I looked down and there was a red paper heart that just appeared at his foot. Now inside the church, I suddenly became aware of a poster that said Mary Magdalene, who was Jesus's lover and ministry partner. And the pet poster said, the apostles apostle. And then it just hit me that Mary walked, worked alongside Jesus in their ministry. And then I heard y'all say that our ministry mirrors theirs. We are mirroring Jesus and Mary Magdalene's shared ministry. And this was an incredible realization for me. And at that moment, as I was explaining to one of my other coaches what Jean was telling me, I noticed that there was a panel of priests conducting a lecture inside the church. And one priest was speaking into the microphone and suddenly the audio began cutting in and out. And the poor priest, he looked so befuddled. Now Candy, another one of my coaches, realized immediately that Jean was confirming that I had heard his message correctly by interrupting the audio. We all understood and we had a secret laugh, but the poor priest was beside himself. Jean was really messing with his groove over there. <laughs> now as we gathered in the square in front of the church, Jacqueline said to me that she saw a plaque with the name Ellie. And Ellie is her life partner's name. And along with the plaque, she saw the number 21. And she said, what does 21 mean? And I said, well, that's the year of Jean's birth. So we said, oh my goodness, what a synchronicity. You'll notice this, your loved ones will bring you numbers to let you know that they are present. Numbers that are meaningful to you, to them. A special date, birth date, an anniversary, the year that they left their bodies, which is the anniversary, the birth date of their birth into their spirit bodies. 
Now, later that day, we all ended up at Le Castellet, and that's a fortified medieval village high on the hills above the sea. And I had wanted to find the restaurant where Jean and I had dined back in 1981 during our first visit to this village. And I had been unsuccessful in finding it, and I had been back to the village once before. And suddenly, Candy showed me her phone screensaver photo of Jean. Now, this was out of nowhere. Why was she doing this? And suddenly, when she shows me the fit picture, and she doesn't know why, I said, Candy, do you know that that photo of Jean was taken by me when we were dining at Le Castellet during our first visit here? And the photo showed Jean sitting in front of a large window overlooking the hills beyond Le Castellet. And the restaurant had a big, big picture window that was actually open. And I had looked, as I said, and I couldn't find the restaurant, couldn't find it, at, no matter what. And at that moment, Candy said, well, what about that restaurant over there? And then she pointed to a place called Le Panoramique. And I knew it wasn't the right place, but all my coaches went along with me over to that Panoramique restaurant. And when we entered, I showed the restaurant owner the photo of Candy, the photo, the photo of Jean on Candy's phone. And I said, do you know where that restaurant was? And the man pointed to the building opposite his. And he said that it was a grand table that closed 15 years ago. So Jean brought us as close as possible to our original spot. Now, isn't that something? Now, when we entered the restaurant's terrace garden, we were amazed. We saw a dark gray rabbit in a cage. Now, Candy said, Jamie, do you remember a couple of weeks ago when we were having our online coaches training and supervision group, Jean handed me a gray rabbit during our group meditation. And she said at the time, we didn't know what that meant. And now we realized Jean knew that he was going to lead us to this restaurant, which was as close as he could get to our original place. And he used the rabbit to let us know that he had already planned to lead us to this place with the gray rabbit and showing once again that the future has already happened. He already knew that there was a gray rabbit in the cage and he was going to bring us here. Now, I got down on the ground where the cage was. Candy is really great with animals, and she'd been asking the bunny to come to her, but he wouldn't do it. So I got down, and I asked the rabbit to hop over and kiss my cheek, and he did. He hopped right over, and he bust my cheek. And then he freaked out. This wasn't his normal repertoire, and I realized that Jean was using the rabbit as his open vessel. And you'll notice when your loved ones communicate their presence to you using open vessels, the animal will be acting out of the norm. They might sit very still, they might be frozen as if in a trance, their eyes might be closed, or in this case, the rabbit just scurried off to a hidden section of his cage because he was just out of his element. Jean had sort of stepped in and energetically cloned himself through the bunny so he could give me a kiss. So we didn't get a photo of that kiss. And after a few minutes, I said, oh, would you come out again and do it again so we can get a photo? And he did, he came out again. Now, the next day, which was Tuesday, the day before my birthday, we drove to a village called Bom Les Mimosa. Now, that is a beautiful medieval village, very high on the cliffs and very close to the Mediterranean Sea. And when we parked in the parking area for visiting the village, my eyes were pulled to a parking spot that had been designated for somebody it was reserved, and the, the initials were DGS. Now, DGS, I mentioned in Love Never Dies, from the moment Jean left his body, I started getting license plates in front of me, beside me, behind me, with the plate DGS. And finally, I said, what is this DGS? And Jean said, do God's service. So you'll notice very often your loved ones will make their presence known to you also through... In addition to numbers, they will use letters, license plate letters, sign letters. So pay attention to that too. Now, after we came out of this village, the GPS took me 
on a mountainous route. And I had wanted to take this mountainous route so that we could end up at the Col du Canadel, which is this incredibly high mountainous hairpin turn road that whips around like a ribbon on the edge of the rocks, very high. And everywhere you look is the sea beyond. And so we did, and it was magical to come back that way. And in the evening, we went to the harbor at saint henri sur mer and, and in the harbor, I noticed there was a carousel. And one of my coaches said, would you like to have a birthday ride on the carousel? And I realized I'd never been on a carousel before. So I was like a little girl. I hopped on the carousel. I had the ride. And when I got off the ride, Again, I noticed there was a mounted light on a building just opposite the carousel, and it was flashing on and off, on and off, on and off. Now, Judith, one of my coaches, had seen it flashing on and off and didn't pay any attention. And she said, well, it kept on flashing as soon as you got on the ride and throughout your ride. And again, she, someone who's devoted, she's one of our love revolutionaries, she herself dismissed it. So notice if one of my love revolutionaries is dismissing all the signs that we're getting, imagine how many signs you're missing, right? After uh, we walked away, a second later, I took a look at that light and it was normal again. So once again, as you acknowledge a manifestation and that your loved one is communicating through this earthly prop or the human or animal open vessel or through the sign, whatever your loved one is using to communicate his or her presence, once you acknowledge it, the sign will stop. The light will stop flashing. Whatever is being used will go back to normal. Now, the next day, Wednesday was my birthday, and we took a boat to Pokerol Island. Beautiful, beautiful island right off uh, the town of Yer. And in the evening, we ate at Le Prado Plage. And this is a beautiful restaurant, a covered terrace on a cliff overlooking a private beach. And the private beach is really close, really, to the port that takes you to Pokerol Island. But from this private cove, you see nothing. Now, I had to go to Joyce's Beamer, her rented Beamer, to get bug spray, and I went with Paula. And Jean did such an amazing manifestation, I still can't believe it. When I tried to relock her car using the remote, he locked the front doors, but not the back. Well, then I tried again, and he locked the back doors, and not the front. And he kept doing this game, and at first, I myself, who's so accustomed to all of Jean's little tricks, I kept thinking, what's wrong? What's wrong? Why is the car not locking properly? And then it hit me, wait a minute, the technology can't distinguish and only lock the back and not the front or only the front and not the back. <laughs> so I realized this was Jean. And then he locked all the lights, but then he made just the headlights flash. Just them, not the rear lights. Then he made the rear red brake lights flash. and. We were laughing, and it was night by this time. And when I returned to the table, a dragonfly landed right next to me. Notice those dragonflies. They are such powerful spirit messengers as well. Now, on Thursday night, I was sitting on the porch of our rented house again, and I led a meditation. And Jacqueline said that she felt herself getting married, and nobody understood what on earth she meant. And she explained well, that she actually never had the chance to marry Ellie, her life partner and the father of her two children. Now, the next day, she went back to the Basilica at Saint-Maximin. And when she arrived, a wedding was going on. And she knew this was Ellie's gift to her. It was as if he was saying, we're marrying now energetically. And Candy then recalled a recent group meditation over Zoom, in which she, she saw Jacqueline getting married, and she didn't even have a clue why that was happening. So there you go again, <laughs> right? Crazy. So when I returned home on Sunday morning, I was kind of feeling a little bit adrift because I had just spent a whole week with all my girls, and here I was alone. And so 
The next thing I knew, a goldfinch came to a tree branch that was right next to my, my porch couch, and he sat with me. Can you imagine? He sat with me for about, oh, I'd say 15 minutes, which is pretty amazing. And then he wiggled his beak three times for, I love you. And I hadn't had that happen in a really long time. Notice the animals will very, very often, very, very often, they will speak to you by wiggling their beaks. And if you really tune in energetically, you're going to notice that their beaks are moving the same amount of times as the words that your loved one wants to communicate. Like, for example, just today, I was troubled by something. I went to the kitchen. I was on the phone with my housekeeper, Donna, and suddenly a little bird lands right on the windowsill and he opens his beak once for hi. And I looked, him, looked at him and I said, oh, Donna, that's Shaw letting me know he's with me. And then I look again at the bird and he does it one more time and then he flies off. Okay, so now a couple of days after this beautiful goldfinch manifestation, I was standing at the kitchen sink and a Phoebe landed on the table outside. And I said to the Phoebe, you know, I had a Phoebe friend who would fly to the window and kiss my cheek through the glass and I haven't seen him in a couple of years. Will you fly to the glass and kiss me through the glass? And he instantly did. And that's a really great example of how our thoughts convey energetic messages because the bird was picking up the energetic communication and he understood what I was asking and responded and that's the same mechanism as when you send an energetic communication to uh, your loved ones in spirit. Now a week ago I was having a really really hard day. A patient had gone off the rails. She was really mad at me and she was giving me a lot of anger that was really meant for her mom. And two days later, I was running a live group here. And would you believe a member of that group, a guy named Tim, said that he had had a dream about me on Monday night. And he said that he could feel I was being kicked when I was down. And I was lying in bed and he sat beside me and kissed my forehead to offer me comfort. Now that blew my mind because it proved once again that there is an energy pipeline. And he picked up on the pipeline that I was upset and needed some comfort or maybe also Jean informed him energetically of what was bothering me and Jean sent him the message on the energy pipeline to comfort me in Jean's name. And he knew that Tim would share the message and bring Jean's comfort to me through him. Let me take a brief break and I'm gonna be back with you in a moment. And then I just, uh, I'm just gonna give you a couple more because I haven't talked to you for a while so I wanna catch you up. I'll be back in a moment on Love Never Dies Radio. Love Never Dies is now on the Dream Vision 7 radio network every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. and 1 a.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, also known as Dr. Love, is the number one international best-selling author of Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in and find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. Do you wonder how to bring more vitality, abundance, and celebration into your life? Are you open to discovering a simple and reliable method of deep inquiry and spiritual practice? Join Michael Bernard Beckwith, creator of the Life Visioning Process, this September at Omega Institute. You'll explore profound questions and learn practical techniques that empower you to live a rich, joyful life. Mention discount code DREAM for 10% off when you register for this workshop with Michael Bernard Beckwith. Learn more at eomega.org. Are you grieving a lost loved one? Did you know that reconnecting is the only way to end the pain? 
Hi, it's Dr. Jamie Turndorf inviting you to my transformational Love Never Dies workshop October 22 through 29 at Rhythmia Life Advancement Center in Costa Rica where I'll guide you to turn off your tears and turn on boundless prosperity in every area of your life. Together we'll share mouth-watering farm-to-table organic meals as we surrender to the caress of tropical sea breezes, sensual Swedish massages, muscle-melting whirlpools, Dead Sea mud baths, mind-expanding Shiva Ray yoga, the answer is you classes by Reverend Beckwith, breathwork, hydrocolonic cleanses, and plant medicine. Join me and be liberated from a sense of separation and sink into a sea of love, peace, healing, and unity. For more information and to register, visit rhythmia.link slash turndorf event. That's rhythmia.link slash turndorf event. You're listening to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If you yearn to get along better with your life partner or spouse, friends, family members, and even co-workers, Dr. Turndorf's book, Kiss Your Fights Goodbye, Dr. Love's 10 Simple Steps to Cooling Conflict and Rekindling Your Relationship shows you how to turn conflict into connection for a lifetime of lasting love. Find out more about Kiss Your Fights Goodbye at AskDrLove.com. This is Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. This show is for you, the listener. Once again, here's Dr. Turndorf. Welcome back to Love Never Dies Radio. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf, and we're going to be talking about the fear that your grief will never end in a couple of seconds. Just want to give you a couple of more manifestations to give you an idea of the breadth of the ways that your loved ones communicate with you. And this one happened this weekend. It was amazing. I took a trip to the Connecticut Sound and nobody knew that I had gone. When I arrived into the village of Old Lyme, I heard John saying to me that there was a jazz club and that he really, oh, I have to back up. This is important. This is wild. And you're going to notice machines when they don't operate correctly and then they do again. That's another way that your loved ones manifest their presence. My, I have a, a, a convertible and the cruise control never works on it. There's nothing wrong with it. The elect, the, none of the mechanics can find anything wrong with this, this cruise control. The only time it works is when I'm embarking on a trip, be it a weekend or a longer vacation. and. I will hear Jean say, I am with you on the trip, and to let you know, you'll be able to turn the cruise control on now, and sure enough, it'll always work. And once again, on this weekend, same thing happened. I heard him say he was with me, the cruise control went on, and then it didn't work again on the next day, and the next day, and the next day. Now, later that day, uh, he told me that I should go to a jazz club. And it had been closed out, this club. It had been filled for two months. But he said, just go. I'll get you a seat. So I go to the jazz club. It's called the Side Door Great Club in Old Lyme at the Old Lyme Inn. And I wait. And they do get me a seat. And I sit down. And I hear him say, Jamie, I'm with you tonight. I'm enjoying this club with you. I order a Grand Marnier and a snifter. The waitress brings me what looks like a Grand Marnier. I take one sip and I nearly spit it out. It was a cognac, Jean's favorite after-dinner drink. I hate cognac. Now, that was such an incredible experience because it was Jean's way of saying, see, I am with you. I ordered my drink. (laughs) And the waitress said to me, she's very, very, very open to spirit, and nothing like that has ever happened, but she's not surprised that Jean used her. Now, when I got back home on Monday, I received a message from my beautiful Kip, uh, my beautiful, beautiful <laughs> Kip. He's just all about love. And all he said is, this is a message from Jean, a flowered dress, a tender kiss, a sunny day, a warm, gentle breeze, sand between the toes, the waves at play, the beautiful beach, reminders of a love shared in every way, souls made it forever, ever and ever to stay. Kip didn't even know I had gone to the beach, but Jean asked him to tell me this message because Jean wanted me to know that he was with me and then he used Kip as the open vessel. So all of these manifestations show you just how much your loved ones, 
know what you're feeling. They know what you need. They notice when you open yourself to the truth that they're with you. And they notice when you are acknowledging that they're right beside you. And when you make this acknowledgement, their miracles abound all the more. And this is a really good segue into what I want to talk with you about today. And the, the question of, do you fear your grief will never end? Which is tonight's and today's topic. So when you're drowning in grief, especially in the early days of grief, time really seems to stand still. And you know, in the early days, I wrote a poem that really expresses this truth. When by grief you are beset, your internal time clock gets upset. A minute seems an hour long, a weekend's an eternity. The lonely nights drag on and on like an endless leave of maternity. It feels like your grief will never end because time seems to stand still. It just moves so slowly. Now, contrary to popular belief, time does not heal grief. And I'm going to say it again. Time doesn't heal grief. Now, why do I say that? It's because I know that time actually adds salt to the wound. Time makes grief worse. And this is because we aren't meant to be separated from the people that we love. And the longer you go without connecting to your loved ones in spirit, what happens to you? The worse you feel, the worse your grief becomes. So I want I want you to realize that the pain, the pain is always going to be worsened around holidays, special occasions, birthdays, your birthday, your loved one's birthday, anniversaries. It makes it worse because all you do is think about the past. You know, I was talking to one of my coaches around the holidays and her name's Kathy. And she had begun dialoguing with her daughter a couple of weeks prior. And she told me that for the first time in four years, she actually felt ready to put up a Christmas tree and all the old decorations. But then she said that the experience of putting up the old decorations and the ornaments was sad. Well, of course it was sad. Why? Because the nostalgia associated with her hanging the family ornaments brought back the past when her loved one, her daughter, was still in a body. So now she fell into the reminiscing trap. And that's why I always say that the word reminisce rhymes with the word miss, because reminiscing makes you miss your loved one even more. Now, I know it's natural to go down the reminiscing road, especially during holidays and special occasions, like the birthdays and the anniversaries. But when it comes to grief, can you see that all that nostalgia and reminiscing makes you grieve more and it reinforces the feeling that your grief is never going to end. So think about it. When you reminisce with your loved ones who are still in a body, the reminiscing becomes the occasion for rejoicing. Because you might say, remember when we bought this ornament, you were wearing pigtails and you were still lisping and then everyone smiles as we weave a lovely tapestry of memories that link the threads of the past with the threads of the present. But when you reminisce about a loved one who's no longer in a body, the reminiscing doesn't keep the thread of the connection alive. The reminiscing reminds you that the thread is broken and then you grieve more. So that's why I say the more you reminisce over those who aren't in a body, the more you miss them. And this means your grief doesn't end and it won't ever end. So if you want your grief to end, you have to keep the thread of connection alive. And to do this, you have to continue weaving the thread of the connection into the tapestry of your current life and your daily rituals so that you continue making memories with those in spirit. So for example, when I went back to the Connecticut Sound where Jean and I visited often. This time I didn't sit there remembering the past. Instead I continued my connection with Jean by weaving that thread of the past into the thread of the present moment. I went to a jazz club that didn't exist when Jean was in a body. 
but I didn't reminisce over other times when we were here in this area together. I literally brought him to the club with me. And when the waitress brought me his favorite after dinner drink, the cognac, we toasted our continued love and our joy in being at the club together. In other words, I engaged in a continuation of the same rituals we always perform together because we love jazz clubs. But in this way, our past and our present became one. So if you don't want to continue grieving forever, it's vital that you reconnect rather than reminisce. So remember, reminisce rhymes with miss because when you reminisce, you continue to miss your loved one. And this me means your grief is going to go on and on forever. Now, I want to share a beautiful story of a patient of mine named Dawn, whose best, best friend left her body. Um, and it was, uh, again, right before the holidays. And I was conducting a group therapy session with her. And I noticed something was very wrong. And I said to her, what is wrong? And she said in the past week that her best friend, Elsie, who had been like a sister to her, had left her body without warning. And she went on to explain that she and Elsie and a group of mutual female friends had just gone for their annual Ladies' Day at Foxwoods Casino in Connecticut, Connecticut, actually not far from where I was this past weekend. Now, on the way back home, Elsie, who was driving her own car, said that one of her tires was having trouble and she needed to stop to put air in it. And Dawn and another member of their party pulled into the service station behind Elsie. And after filling her tire, Elsie announced that she wanted to go to Walmart to purchase a temporary patch kit. And because uh, Dawn was sure that somebody was going to be with Elsie and stay with her until her chore was finished, Dawn said, okay, goodbye to her best friend, and she headed home. But not long after that, Dawn received a frantic call from the woman who had accompanied Elsie to Walmart. And she said, you've got to hurry back. Something's really wrong with Elsie. She collapsed on the ground. She's having a seizure. So Dawn raced back to the store. And as the other, and the other woman, who was, who's also a nurse, performed CPI, CPR on Elsie. But by the time Dawn arrived back at the scene, Elsie was already out of her body. And Dawn just cried as she described seeing her friend on the pavement, her eyes rolled back in her head, and her clothing soiled with urine. And ever since this tragic, traumatic event, Dawn and the other women were berating themselves nonstop for failing to save Elsie. Now, at the moment Dawn shared her feelings of guilt with me and the group, Elsie came through like gangbusters. She was hell-bent, or I guess I should say heaven-sent, on talking with Dawn and setting her straight. And first, Elsie described in non-technical terms what happened to her. And knowing that Dawn and her other friend were nurses, you'd think that uh, Elsie was also a nurse. And so I was confused when I began to hear Elsie's description of her condition because it didn't sound like she was a nurse. She's struggling to explain what happened to her, I said. And Dawn said, no, Elsie wasn't a nurse. So then she went on to say that her friends were not wrong to blame themselves, that she'd been bleeding in her brain, and that she was out of her body before she hit the ground, and that the CPR was artificially keeping her alive. And she reassured Dawn that she had no pain. And then she showed the image of a tire on her car. And she said what happened in her brain was the same thing that happened to the inner tube of her tire. It bulged and it blew. And then Dawn confirmed that uh, Elsie's symptoms were consistent with a brain aneurysm, which is exactly what her friend was describing happened to her. And so Elsie went on to say, look, don't be sad. Chin up, she said. And she kept saying, chin up. There was nothing you could have done. And Dawn just burst out in tears. And she said, she always would tell me, keep my chin up. And then she showed that she was kicking up her heels, showing that she was free to move and dance about. She wasn't in pain anymore. And Dawn confirmed that she had had a lot of broken bones and she was crippled. It was beautiful. The point of all of this, by the time we got done with this entire reconnection, Elsie said, oh, save the drumstick for me at Thanksgiving, put a place for me and save the drumstick. And Dawn gasped because Elsie always ordered a drumstick when they went to the diner every week for lunch. The point being, they were gonna make new life and new rituals together. And Dawn did have her to the Thanksgiving table and she came back the week after and said she was happy 
she was reconnecting and the weight was off her shoulders. So that's a really great example. I'm going to be back in a moment on Love Never Dies Radio. Love Never Dies is now on the Dream Vision 7 radio network every Wednesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. and 1 a.m. Eastern Time. Dr. Jamie Turndorf, also known as Dr. Love, is the number one international best-selling author of Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased. If you're grieving the loss of a loved one, tune in and find out how to reconnect and heal any unfinished business using Dr. Turndorf's groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique. Visit AskDrLove.com to find out more. If you can't stop grieving over the loss of someone you love, the reason is surprisingly simple. You aren't meant to be separated from those you love. And reconnecting and staying connected is the only way to turn off the tears and transform your grief to joy. For a healing transformation like nothing you've ever experienced before, join Dr. Jamie Turndorf for her Rhythmia Costa Rica workshop, Love Never Dies. How to reconnect and make peace with your lost loved one based on her number one international best-selling Hay House book, Love Never Dies. How to reconnect and make peace with the deceased in 34 languages. Reconnect and dissolve the pain of grief. Heal any unfinished business. Obtain guidance from loved ones in spirit and discover boundless prosperity in every aspect of your life. For more information and to register today for the transformation vacation of a lifetime, visit AskDrLove.com slash live events. That's AskDrLove.com slash live events. Are you ready to take your skills as a medium to the next level? World-renowned spirit medium Lisa Williams will help you develop your gifts in a seven-day advanced mediumship certification course at Omega Institute starting August 25th. Step beyond your comfort zone and strengthen your connection to spirit. For 10% off, mention discount code DREAM when you register for this advanced mediumship certification course with Lisa Williams at Omega. Learn more at eomega.org. You're listening to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. If you can't stop crying over the bodily loss of a loved one, Dr. Turndorf's number one international bestseller, Love Never Dies, How to Reconnect and Make Peace with the Deceased, will show you how to toss out the tissues and transform your grief into joy using her groundbreaking new Dialoguing with the Departed technique that enables you to reconnect and even heal unfinished business with those in spirit without the assistance of a medium, channeler, or psychic. Sign up for Dr. Love's free newsletter at AskDrLove.com and receive an exciting gift, a free excerpt of Love Never Dies. And now, back to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Welcome back to Love Never Dies Radio. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf. We're talking about the fear that your grief will never end and the reality that if you continue to reminisce and you don't reconnect, your grief won't end because time does not heal your pain. You're not meant to be separated from the people you love. And as time passes, you just miss the people you love in spirit all the more. So I want to get very concrete with you now. And I want to give you a roadmap to follow about how to avoid reminiscing and how to reconnect instead. So before you engage in any activity that you used to do with your loved one, I want you to use my visualization and my meditation for making contact. And um, actually, the visualization and meditation for making contact is in the Love Never Dies book, but I've also recorded the meditations in my own voice, and you can find them at AskDrLove.com under the store drop-down and you'll see Love Never Dies Meditation Audio. So you can use those meditations, the visualization and meditation, and then I want you to consciously bring your loved one into whatever ritual you are performing, okay? Now, in the case of Kathy, who I mentioned before, who was decorating the tree with her daughter in spirit, she would say, Remember when we bought this ornament and decorated to the tree together? Well, how about we buy a new ornament together this year and then you'll help me pick it out and we'll put it up together. So you see, we're, we're engaging in the ritual and we're allowing our loved one to enter into the dialogue with you. And you're going to talk back and forth. 
and you're going to make new memories together. And you're going to do this in the same way that Jean and I had a lovely birthday dinner together um, for my birthday in the restaurant and how he celebrated with me and, you know, basically lit the lights on the car as you light the lights on a, on a Christmas, uh, on, a, on a birthday cake. So, and then when, when I went to the, the Connecticut Sound this weekend and went to the jazz club with him, I'm going to add that experience with him in spirit to all my other memories of beautiful weekends that we shared together. And it's like stringing another bead and another bead and another bead on a beautiful necklace strand. And the strand isn't broken. It just grows longer and longer from a choker you're not choking on your grief. You're making a very, very long necklace. Now, I want to also talk about daily meals, okay? So, set a place for your loved one in spirit. Speak to him or her during the meal. Your loved one's right here with you in every way but in a body. So, why wouldn't you invite your loved one to your table? Are you getting the idea? So, the point is, we want to stretch beyond the material realm that surrounds us. We want to stretch our spiritual muscles to include all those we love who are with us in every way but in a body. Now, I know that it is a natural reaction to want the physical presence of your loved one. You want to see your loved one. You want to hear his or her voice. You want to feel his touch or her touch. And we are physical creatures. We live in a body and we do crave physical and auditory and tactile contact. But I will tell you this, when you learn to switch to the spirit channel in your brain and when you learn how to allow yourself to fully open to receiving your loved one's love, you actually feel a physical connection. You feel your loved one's arms around you. You feel the warmth of your loved one's hand on your shoulder. You feel it. All my coaches feel it. Everyone I work with feels it. So it's even to the point where when you're that open, they are able to work with you energetically to literally help you feel them physically. I know it's a stretch, but we do it. I do it all the time with all my coaches and all my clients. And so I, I just want you to be reassured that this awaits you as well. And also I want to make sure to remind you about the Love Never Dies audiobook. It is available for free with Audible Trial Membership. And I read the book in my own voice. So it's a really beautiful journey. And I also want to make sure that you know what's coming up so that you can join me personally. I have some very exciting things coming up. I was so pleased when Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith called me and personally asked me to bring my Love Never Dies workshop to his new center in Costa Rica at the Rhythmia Life Advancement Center. And that's from October 22nd through 29th. I'll be with you an entire week. I'm going to guide you to turn off your tears and turn on boundless prosperity in every area of your life. And I want you to know that you can feel completely free to come alone because you're going to be welcomed into my soul family of spiritual seekers. We're going to together enjoy mouthwatering farm to table organic meals with your new friends. You're going to relax into the caress of tropical sea breezes surrender to the embrace of sensual Swedish massages and muscle melting whirlpools and dead sea mud baths and mind expanding Shiva Ray yoga. And they also have the Answer Is You classes by Michael Beckwith, breath work, hydrocolonic cleanses and plant medicine. So I'm inviting you to join me and be liberated from a sense of separation and sink into a sea of love and peace healing and unity and you can find out more about this event i actually put a little video on all my social media pages facebook at ask dr love twitter at ask dr love uh, instagram dr jamie turndorf any of the pages that you're following you can see a beautiful video there with lovely scenes of the event 
Now, you can find out more at Rhythmia, R-Y-T-H-M-I-A dot link slash Turndorf event. If that's too hard to remember, just go to AskDrLove.com slash live event, live events, plural. Now, during the week, I'm going to show you how to reconnect with your loved one in spirit. I'm going to show you how to say goodbye to the physical body of your loved one who was taken from you suddenly, but I'm going to show you how to say hello to the spirit body. I'm going to show you how to up, obtain support and guidance from those in spirit, and I'm going to show you how to use my dialoguing with the departed technique to heal any lingering hurt, sadness, anger, or grudges that you didn't get to work through before your loved one left his or her body. And by the time you complete your work with me during this week, your relationship isn't going to, isn't is not only going to be better than when you were with your loved one on earth, but you're going to be able to love again and regain a life that's full of joy and happiness. And I want you to know your loved ones really, really want to do this with you. They don't want you to stay stuck in grief. They want you to realize that they're always with you. I'm going to show you how um, to perfect your ability to communicate through human and animal open vessels. And that the open vessels are people and animals, both domestic and wild, who are naturally open channels for spirit. I'm going to show you all the ways that your loved ones in spirit communicate with you using earthly props like electronic devices, lights, computers, and phones. And I'm going to show you how your loved ones reach out to you through dreams and mind melding, which is also thought induction. And I'm also going to show you how to recognize all the signs that they're sending you. You're going to recognize all of them so you will not miss any of the signs. We're also going to go over how to overcome the false beliefs and the false religious teachings that are blocking you from reconnecting. And I'm going to help you uh, discover the latest science that explains how reconnecting happens. We're going to get get through all the false beliefs. I mean, I can tick them off. There are so many that block people. The belief that you won't be able to move on with your life. The move that, belief that you're blocking them from moving on. The belief that time is going to, the false belief that time is going to heal your grief, which is untrue. Uh, the belief that you won't be able to move on and love anybody else. So many false beliefs. Um, the fear that reconnecting will open the door to the devil. I'm going to show you why this is untrue and why you're safe at all times. I'm going to show you also how to turn, create a state of receptivity so that you can turn on your natural God-given ability to send and receive energetic communications. I'm going to show you uh, how to open up your five senses. We're going to have a lot of experiential exercises so that you're able to see, smell, touch, taste, hear, feel all the communications that are being sent your way all the time. And this is going to open you up to recognizing the signs. Then I'm going to show you how to have dialogues back and forth with the help of these um, uh, earthly props. And then I'm going to show you how to have direct dialogues with your loved ones in spirit. And you're going to have the direct dialogues to obtain guidance on what is the right path you need to take to prosper. I'm going to show you how to dialogue to heal unfinished business of any kind. It's going to be amazing. Amazing. So again, AskDrLove.com slash live events to find out more. That's Rhythmia, October 22nd through 29th. I'm also going to be at the New York Open Center where all the top spiritual leaders go and work. I'm going to give you a day-long Love Never Dies workshop October 7th. That is going to be an amazing experience. Amazing. And it'll be a, a much abbreviated version, but we'll have a wonderful time to begin your reconnection and begin your healing. And I want to close out by just bringing you into a little meditation. This is the meditation we always do before reconnecting. So I want you to just lie down or sit, close your eyes, take three deep breaths. And as you breathe, I want you to imagine a golden light entering your body through your crown chakra, the energy center located at the top of your head. And as you exhale, feel that warm golden light washing over your body. Imagine it having the power to penetrate your blood, your organs, and your cells. 
And as you exhale, feel the tension leaving your body through your fingertips and toes. And as the tension eases, sink deeper and deeper into the chair, the couch, or the bed. And feel that warm light washing over you like warm lava melting into you. Your muscles are turning to taffy, melting in the summer sun. And see the light as it flows downward, starting at your head and then moving down your face, your neck, shoulders, arms, hands, fingers, chest, upper back, stomach, mid-back, groin, lower back, thighs, knees, shins, calves, ankles, feet, and toes. If you sense any area of the body resisting the flow, just let the inhaling breath enter that area of constriction and let your exhaling breath flush out any tension. And just keep sinking and sinking as if you're in an elevator, dropping lower and lower, or in a well bucket, dropping lower and lower down the well. And do this meditation every day. The more you practice, the more you'll be able to tune to the spirit channel in your brain, and that will begin your reconnection. And remember, reconnect, don't reminisce. That's the only way your grief will ever end. I will see you next time on Love Never Dies Radio. I'm going to be having a beautiful uh, best-selling author, Jean Hayner, a Hay House author. She'll be at Omega. We'll talk to her about how you can read your destiny by your face. <laughs> see you next time on Love Never Dies Radio. You're listening to Love Never Dies with Dr. Jamie Turndorf. Is your heart still hurting over the bodily loss of your loved one? The reason is simple. We're not meant to be separated from those we love. And reconnecting is the only solution. But reconnecting and staying connected requires guidance. That's why Dr. Turndorf has created her exclusive members-only love club, a private, intimate, and loving online group where she'll personally guide you to reestablish your relationship with your loved one in spirit and even resolve any issues that remain. If you're ready to discover the healing and joy of reconnecting, visit AskDrLove.com slash The Love Club and apply for a seat. But don't wait. To keep the group intimate, seats are limited. Visit AskDrLove.com slash The Love Club and request to join today. That's AskDrLove.com slash The Love Club. This is Dream Vision 7 Radio Network, uniting mankind with universal love. Our shows are created from the heart, bringing each listener to a place of divine enlightenment. Breathe, relax, and enjoy. Let life flow.